Hello again, everybody. It is Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage and promotion of the sport continues. Our Nike hot seat guest today, a very special one indeed, making his return to the program. The uh, the topic of the great story, Lost Dreams Awaken, Be a Champion in Life. Richard Jensen joins us from Richard, you're in Oregon or Washington? I'm actually in Oregon, right out of Portland. Right, yeah. Right outside of Portland. Well, Richard, first of all, welcome back to the show. Welcome to the Nike hot seat. Thanks, Scott. You look like you dropped a few pounds. I've been uh, keeping track of you on Facebook, my friend. Uh, you know, I have. I uh, Right about Christmas is when I started my training camp, and I got on the scale at 224, man. And and uh, the diet's been awesome for the last um, 60 days, and I'm down to 198, and I'm feeling great. Every morning I work out with a with a personal training partner for an hour and a half, and we, we've been doing some uh, cardio. I feel great, Scott. Last year and I talked, you were going to be going over with a, a large contingent of veterans to compete in Greece. And last we talked, you told me at that time anyway, you felt like hanging up the shoes. Obviously, you've had a change of heart. You know, I have, Scott. And, uh, you know, the last couple of years, I've battled with some mechanical body issues going into competition. And it's been ringing me mentally. And uh, last year, I thought that I was out of the getting out of the game. And uh, part of me... Um, and what I did is I went to Athens, you know, and I, I, I came back completely inspired and realized the value in not only my story, but the followers that follow me competing, you know, and as long as uh, my body can hold out, um, I really need wrestling in my life, Scott, at whatever level that is. And I found that uh, I realized I can stay in it a little bit longer. I just need to diet and train a little bit more smarter, you know, to be able to stay in it for the longevity. And it's diet and train to guys uh, more our age, your age, my age, et cetera. And I'm learning that as I get older, my body is responding completely different than it did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you're also on tour. Um, let's take you back to 2008. ESPN did a special on you. You'd come out of prison, uh, regained your love for the sport of wrestling. Uh, you wrestled for Clackamas community, helping them achieve their goals. And you achieved some of yours, found a new love for the sport. Uh, and, and that ESPN special really raised awareness about you, your story, and you've taken from there developing a message of faith and, uh, uh, and, and belief in oneself that we are not all powerful, but we have those around us that can help us be better than we even thought we could. Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah. And that documentary is available on my website, www.lostdreamsawaken.org. And it's available to anybody to watch. It's very powerful. Um, after the documentary came out, you know, I always had a love to want to talk to kids at what level I had no idea. You know, I just thought maybe I'd try to make a small difference locally. And the response from the documentary was incredible. I got fan mail, I got emails, and it just kind of, it, it blew my mind. And what I realized is the value in my story and the value um, in helping um, uh, inspire these kids to make good, positive lifestyle choices. And I didn't know if I could publicly speak, and so I tested the waters a little bit. And it didn't take long to find out that I was able to actually uh, motivational speak as good as anybody. And so I ran with it, created Be a Champion in Life, and I've been traveling the country sharing my story through the lens of wrestling. And it's very, um, everybody, um, I touch everybody's life in that room, not just the kids, but the teachers, administration, coaches, everybody gets it. And what happens is everybody feels like, you know what, it's never too late. And we, we, uh, and, and, and we, you know, we want to make better decisions to be a better person. And it's just incredible the, what I've done and the response from it. And so it keeps me inspired and in driving forward. Richard Jensen, our guest, uh, you can find him online, uh, at, uh, lostdreamsawaken.org. You can also look for him on Facebook just type in Richard Jensen, Jensen, and, uh, he, and, uh, you know what, follow him because, uh, he helps to keep me motivated as well. And yeah. th your story is really quite improbable uh, in how it all started, but how it's uh, continuing perhaps is the greater inspiration. Would you agree? I, I would, yes. And I believe a lot of people stood back, you know, for four or five years. I speaking and I was traveling a little bit and I was kind of cultivating a, a great program over time. And now I've nailed it like any professional, you know. And uh, I think that with the with the high relapse rate in, in addiction and the high 
um, people um, sell out and fall short, you know, over the it's it's tough to get a year, let alone multiple years, and now almost 13 years and find the success on the mat. It's just a, a really um, the odds are, are it's a small small percentage, and so I think a lot of people stood back and kind of watched to see what was going to happen over time, and so you know what they realized over a few years now is I'm blowing up and be a champion in life, and I'm traveling everywhere, and it's really taken off last couple of years, and I think. It, what it is is it validates who I am, it validates what I'm doing, and it validates the fact that I really am out there to help people um, make positive choices, you know, and impact kids all over the country. And so it's real now, and it's touchable and tangible. We make hundreds and thousands of choices on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis, and not all of them are going to be good. Uh, it's like the words we choose uh, are not always 100% good, but um, perhaps the intention was good. And maybe the decisions we make, the intentions are good. But um, there is a point in addiction, whether it's alcohol or drugs or, or what have you, uh, where we lose the ability to make right decisions at all. Yeah. You, uh, you absolutely hit that wall. Absolutely. You know, there's just, it's a, it's, it's a fog. It's a gray area. There's just, you know, the only way for us to make very calculated uh, good positive decisions is to stay away from being foggy from alcohol from drugs and, and it goes above and beyond that you know this this is about becoming better people and making better decisions I mean people struggle with all kinds of things in their life it's not just addiction you know it can be food it can be stress it can be all kinds of stuff man and 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 you know, there's a lot of pressure on these kids nowadays, too. And, and it's just important that we stop and check ourselves. I make very slow, calculated decisions, and it really helps me to um, find some extra success through decision making, you know. And I don't I don't know. I'm just really uh, serious and passionate about what I do. You know, we're losing kids all over the place. And, we're, you know, one kid is too many. And uh, this is my little piece in, in helping them find a little bit of a solution and, and some guidance. We're talking to Richard Jensen. Richard Jensen, of course, the topic of the Outside the Lines ESPN story, and that was uh, really a story of overcoming obstacles and barriers in life and finding uh, finding a new footing. And in wrestling, that's what we're constantly searching for, solid footing. <laughs> finding a higher standard in living and a standard uh, for something more positive than ever before. And it seems to me that, Richard, you were able to catapult yourself through uh, Clackamas Community College, you've opened up a very successful car care business, uh, one that is able to run with you and while you're on the road as well. You're training now for something I never thought I'd see you compete in, the Folk Style Nationals coming up April 1st through the 3rd in Cedar Falls, Iowa. How is training going? Oh man, I'm 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 at the in the best shape of my life right now. Thirty days out from competition, so um, guys are going to have trouble with me this year. You know, I feel great. There's no stress in my life. My life is balanced. Um, I have full custody of my daughter the last six months. That's been huge, man. A huge inspiration for me. And um, you know, I, my diet's been on for almost. You know, since Christmas, it's been on point, you know, and I've dropped uh, about 23 pounds. I'm going to slide into the lighter weight class this year, and I'm feeling at the top of the world. So, you know, absolutely, I've prepared very well. What, I age, trained, what age group yeah. are you going to be competing in? Um, it's C division, and it's uh, 68 to 75 is the is the age. You know, I'm, I'm 70, so... Um, kind of right there in the middle. Um, I don't know. I've never been back there yet. So no, I don't no, know. Let's back up the truck. You're not yeah. 70 years old. You're in no, the weight class not. of 68 to 75 kilos. The year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Birth year, 68 to 75 year, 80, 85 kilos. 85 kilos. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah. 85 I'm coming kilos. in at 187 this okay. year. So birth years between 68 and 75 that's the c division that's and, the c division and i i have this feeling that this is a richard jensen they've never seen before this is a richard jensen they've never seen before and i did something this year um i really focused every single day on being well-rounded and in all facets uh, building up to be a champion and that means everything sleep eat train uh, cardio, and it means writing it on the wall. You know, I've got a triple crown plan this year. I'm going to win um, folk style. I'm going to go back to Vegas. I'm going to win freestyle and Greco-Roman all at 87, 85 kilos this year. That's what I'm going to do. 
And uh, I'm in the best shape of my life. So if it's going to happen, it's going to happen this year. Mm. Richard, you're inspiring me even today. As always, the conversation continues. Um, while at uh, Cedar Falls, while planning and prepping for competition, you're also booking speaking engagements to high school and youth groups and, and uh, coaches groups. Um, while in the various areas that you're going to be competing in, Cedar Falls being one of them, you're going to be looking to speak to high school groups in and around the Cedar uh, Falls area through the greater Cedar Valley area. Uh, Ames, Des Moines, Iowa City. Uh, how, how can people be in touch with you? How can they book a, uh, um, a, a session or a seminar with you? Well, you know, I still have some openings. Uh, it's a huge networking trip for me. My first time to Iowa. Looking forward to it. I have coaches ready to meet with me, but I have dates open for schools. They can go straight to my uh, lostdreamsawaken.org website. They can email me from there. Um, that's the way they make contact with me. Find me on Facebook, Be a Champion in Life, or Richard Jensen. Um, it's that's how they got to get a hold of me. And uh, I have openings. We need to book all those days. And I'll, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna blow you guys away with what I do out there. So. It's a, it's a continuing opportunity, and as coaches, coaches uh, are obviously always looking for a way to inspire their kids. It's more than winning and losing. Yes. It's about winning in life. And it that's, is. And that's the key message here. It's not just about winning on the mat. That perhaps may be one of the easiest things you could do. It's about how do you yep. maintain, rise above the challenges, because there's a whole lot of challenges to today's youth, isn't there? Absolutely. There's a lot of pressures and a lot of challenges for those kids. And there's a lot of distractions and peer pressures. And there's a lot of weird drugs and things out there these kids are falling for. And uh, that's one of the things I push. I talk about, you know, my, the, you know, how it affected my family, my loved ones, myself. But also I get into some of the successes I found over the years. But the key element is that it's a bigger championship that I'm after, and that's being a champion in life. And I, I let them know that these are just awards, you know. What I want to be is the champion in life, and that's setting goals, making good decisions, and being somebody that people look up to, you know. wasn't that long ago that I read uh, something that Richard Keyes wrote to you, an assistant principal at Queensbury Middle School in New York, and I'm going to quote him if I may. Yes. He says, Richard Jensen brings a story that is motivating, believable, and sincere. You could have heard a pin drop on the gym floor during one of his pauses when speaking to the one, uh, excuse me, 600 plus middle school students in attendance. Richard is one of, if not the most genuine and authentic speakers I've ever heard. Richard does not rely on a rehearsed script. He speaks from the heart over time, and it is this approach that hits home with adolescents. He's 100% real. You figured out how to drop the pretense, and kids can see through that very quickly. Yes, Can't they be. can. They can. They will. Um, they can grab it right away if there's a if there's a, a facade or you know anything like that. Every school that I've gone to, the number one uh, thing that the feedback I get is that I'm um, genuine, and they said that that's the most impactful piece in it all. Genuine and sincere. And your sincere. story, your journey, while a remarkable one. Um, there are literally thousands of people like you out there across the country and around the world ha who have enjoyed success in their recovery, but yep. they choose to make it a, intensely private for some. Some of them speak to each other. Some go to AA, NA meetings, or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a private uh, a private hill to climb for you. It's a very public one. Why is that? Um, you know, part of it is, is that I knew that if I, if I, I knew the inspiration in my story, I knew that I was onto something big with my journey and I wasn't ashamed. And once I dealt with some of those demons and I dealt with some of those issues that I had, I realized that, you know what, I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of what I'm about and I'm proud of where I'm going with it. And I knew that for me to make the impact that I needed to make across the country, because it's big scale, I want to talk to every kid in the country. I needed to go as public as I could. I needed to get as much exposure as I could. And that would help me to elevate, be a champion in life and get, get across the country. Because I do believe every kid needs to hear me speak, Scott. They need to hear my story. And they do think twice. They do. They, they understand the depths of it. You know, they're not going to find this in a book. They're not going to find this through any kind of educational piece besides 
use you know a public speaking and, and a personal story and so um they i do get their attention and it's real scott this is real man kids are dying out there i've and, known uh, you for a long time and, and i know what you're saying is is for a fact uh you're not just blowing it up i mean this is this is the truth we are losing kids in the inner city we're losing kids in the suburbs uh we're losing kids that we think are very well taken care of because they're not being taken care of it was uh july of 1970 the 22nd day of that month when you were born and your parents did not raise you to be an addict they did not raise you to be addicted to to run the mean streets you sure it was a pr predominantly black neighborhood but that doesn't always spell failure yeah in your case it took you down the wrong road didn't it yes it did and i get emotional scott this is emotional to me man because it is a battle it is a fight you know we need to be proactive these kids need to have every chance every opportunity to make those positive decisions man and uh, um, it does choke me up because there's kids dying on trying heroin and there's so many synthetic weird things out there coming in from out of the country and these kids are experimenting with it and they just don't know anything about it. They, they're, they're messing around with something they know nothing about. And so I've got to educate every kid I can touch, you know. I've never asked I, you this question. Jerry Hurley is who to you? Jerry Hurley is my stepdad who raised me. And? And yeah, yeah, he's my stepdad who raised me over the years. My mom and dad, my mom met Jerry when I was about 12 years old, and he raised me for the rest of till he passed. He was you also know? your coach, right? He was my baseball coach back then. Yes, yes. And mom and mom was scorekeep, and and uh, they just they got together, hit it off, and that was after years of mom, you know, in and out of bad relationships, and then she met Jerry, and it was golden, man. What's interesting it was is through your your life that raised her up as well yes yes think absolutely about it, right yeah yeah good morals yeah. great belief system carried yeah. you guys on yeah. and then uh you took a couple wrong turns and uh, ended up where well, you didn't want to be you know scott that's something i touch on too you know is i didn't wasn't raised in a um a, uh, a drug um, atmosphere. It was a very loving, very family-oriented belief system, and and the thing is, is, I was not bound for that lifestyle. You know, I didn't have those those struggles as a kid. I took off a little bit later, right after high school, and made those decisions. You know, and so the truth is, is that I make it really well known that even if you're not raised in that environment, this can happen to anybody, Scott. Anybody. anybody you're not indeed. In yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can happen to anybody at any age, and you know, it's How, never too late to change your lifestyle. You became addicted to methamphetamine, and methamphetamine, uh, it, 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 is, uh, it dives into your system upon contact through your skin, through your lungs, through your, your nasal passages, however you ingest it, uh, and it becomes... You become the hunter, and it is the hunted. The 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 uh, search for the drug, the use of the drug, the continuing desire for that high, if you can call it that. Yeah. Uh, and it was an addiction, a true addiction, and it only got worse until you became, uh, well, incarcerated. Yep, several times over the years, and finally my health was given away, and I was doing more time in prison and jail than I was out, and it just it it was it was really starting to knock me around pretty bad, and I was at the end of my rope. Your high school wrestling coach, H. Day Waddell. Yeah, H. D. Waddell, H. D. great Waddell. guy. Yeah, he he absolutely believed in you, and yeah. you weren't a great wrestler through high school, but you had a pretty decent senior year. Um, why did you turn back to wrestling upon leaving? uh prison well you know one thing is is that uh, wrestling kept me grounded for a lot of years you know and a lot of guys don't realize because i've had some good success over the years as older now is that i was a 500 wrestler and i never won a, a, a match at the state tournament in high school you know so it's it that's inspiring to kids listen man you might get your wins later but you'll get your wins um but, uh, you know, at the worst, and that's, that's something I, I talk about, too, is at my very worst, my very lowest point in life, I had to grab onto something that was going to be bigger and stronger than that and something that, that I was passionate about. 
and it was wrestling. Wrestling's what helped dig me out of the worst place uh, in the world for me, you know. And um, so, yeah, it would it, it helped me get grounded, get some goal setting going on, help me be part of the team, and and uh, really, I knew that wrestling was going to be the linchpin, not only to help me be successful on the mat, but to be successful in life, every area of my life, because I knew everything I learned in wrestling. I could use in my life. Your mother ended up passing away three weeks into chemotherapy treatment. Um, and you were in prison. Yep. Yeah, I was locked up. And it was the last time. It was uh, October 10th, 2003. I got locked up for a year. Mom passed away a few months later. Um, it affected me greatly, you know. And uh, what I realized at that time was that, that we're not here very long. And I'd already lost a bunch of years. And I didn't, I absolutely didn't want to let. Um, let her and myself down again. I wanted to live in honor of her and stay sober and clean and figure out how to find success and, and be okay in life, you know. Do you remember 2004, Thanksgiving of 2004? I do, I do. The day after Thanksgiving 2004 is when I was released from prison and I was released to a homeless shelter with a bunch of homeless guys and I slept on a gym floor for uh, 30 days. And then it was you looking for a treatment program. You had no money, no insurance, just a desire to get clean. Had $42.50 to my name in an envelope. I had uh, a pair of flip-flops, a pair of sweatpants, and a T-shirt in, in, in November. And homeless, yeah. Hmm. Obviously, uh, there were people out there that had a big heart and wanted to see you do well. Uh, and see you do better. They believed in you, much like wrestling believed in you. You believed in the sport. And through them, you were able to find a 12-step program that was able to assist you in your goals. And it's it's strength through the program. It's not strong because of the program. It's strength through the program, correct? Yes, it is. It's through the unity and through everybody kind of working towards a common goal, and that is to stay sober that one day, Scott, that one day. One day, indeed. Well, I'm going to let you folks check out the balance of the story. I could I could do Q&A with Richard, and we have time and time again. But I want you to find out a little bit more about Richard on your own. And I want you to find out why he should be coming to your school to talk to your kids, to your gym, to your dojo, whatever, wherever you gather to, to celebrate athleticism, to celebrate education. Richard will be happy to, as long as schedule allows, to be able to come talk to you to share his dreams, the ones that have been awakened, if you will. Look for him online at lostdreamsawaken.org. Richard, you know we love you, and, and uh, we're so proud of you. And we thank you for sharing uh, the, the terrible story of your early life and the most incredible story of the life you live today. Thanks, Scott. Can I plug one more thing in real quick? Please do. Hey, my web designers are finally um, reorganized in the last few months. It's called BeAChampionInLife.com. Write it down. Make a note. Very soon you'll be able to tap into that website, and there's going to be all kinds of awesome stuff there talking about what I do, okay? I BeAChampionInLife.com. Well, let us know when it goes live, and we will absolutely help you promote it. I will. You're going to be a champ at uh, 85 kilos? I am. I'm going to be at the top of the podium this year, Scott. I am. And, yes, I am. And, and tell me what disciplines again? What's uh, Folk style in Iowa and then freestyle in Greco in Vegas at the end of the month, all in April. I'm going to be a triple crown this year, Scott. That's what I'm you know what? I, I believe you. I am. <laughs> I am. This is this is my year, and I feel great, man. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to go to battle. Anytime you tell me you've got your sights set on a dream and a goal, you just absolutely go out and kick ass. So thank you so much. Richard, I appreciate you being in the Nike hot seat today and joining me on Takedown, on Takedown Media. Thank you, Scott. For all of us at Takedown, Richard Jensen's been our very special guest, as always. It's an emotional tug for me, but it's, a, uh, uh, it's one that I value so greatly. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you all soon.